property disclosure statement is question number three. What if, what if I do not want to complete one? <laughs> That's what the question asks. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, there are certain exemptions uh, that, you know, you can be exempt from completing one, but if you live in a home mm -hmm. and it's your primary property, it's your primary residential property, um, you have to complete one. Right. Now, uh, the seller's Disclo Home Seller's Disclosure Act requires that you disclose any known defects in a property. Okay. Yes. You have to, in good faith, complete the seller's disclosure and you have to issue it to the buyer. Usually, uh, it can be, you know, it can be ready for the buyer before they even put in the offer uh, or at the time that the purchase offer is um, uh, accepted, you know, where everybody comes to an agreement, you can give them it at that time. Here's the thing. If you don't fill one out and then uh, you're at the closing table, have you heard this, Blair? Your buyer can cancel without any reservation, right. no issues whatsoever. Yeah. They can and cancel no, the transaction. No retribution. No repercussions, right. right. After that, I have a client right now who uh, has closed on a transaction and never did get the seller's disclosure. Oh, wow. So, yeah, and now they're having problems, but here's the beauty of it. We don't have a seller's disclosure, but we actually have an email from the seller telling my client uh, that how wonderful the home is, and she's never had a lick of problems. Sure. So that's that's going to be their seller's disclosure. But, you know, the seller is like, well, I didn't fill one out, so you can't go after me. And mm -hmm. Yes, we can. So it's it's required. Sorry, you have to fill it out. The only time you don't have to fill it out is if you're a personal representative of an estate and you, you know, you have no idea about the property uh, or any of the repairs, even if you're like the child of a parent uh, and the, it was the parent's home, you, even if you live there, but you didn't own it and you're right. the personal rep, you don't have to, you're exempt from completing it. Um, you are not exempt from completing a home seller's disclosure statement. Uh, as a real estate investor, people think all the time, oh, I'm exempt because I never lived in the home. I don't know anything about it. But that's not really what the statute says. The statute says, you know, if you own it and you know uh, about any defects or any repairs, you have to disclose it. It mm -hmm. does not make an exception for seller, um, for uh, uh, investors. You know, so people... my, myself as an investor, not living in anything that I'm flipping, obviously, uh, do I just choose unknown then if the That's issue truly is unknown? Right, unknown. Okay. Uh -huh. Right. Mm -hmm. you, but you, to say exempt, I've never lived in the home. I've seen that. Well, that's not the. That's not what they're asking. They want to know, do you know about the home defects? Mm -hmm. And you own the home. And so that's the difference. So yes, you would say unknown. Gotcha. Okay. Unknown. Right. Unknown. It's Unlocked. in the statute. It's in the statute. I, I have dealt with this where I'm uh, having real estate investors buying from other real estate investors. They're like, where's your seller disclosure? And they're, they're like, well, we don't have to phone out. Oh, yes, you do. You know, when you're exempt, which is usually if you're a personal representative, however, if you start filling one out and you mislead the buyer, you're just as liable as the home seller. So I've had that too. Mm -hmm. you're, you're right. Just, it's, it's the, it's the intention. It's the intentional mm -hmm. misleading. It's the knowing you already knew. There's a phrase that you, know, you call that. that. What is that? Well, it's called fraud. Oh, sure. <laughs> there, there's um, a... Knowing yeah, it, it, I always say fraud is a knowing disregard for the okay. truth. Mm -hmm. That's the easiest way uh, that you can go through it. That's why when you deal with a home, home uh, a real estate investor, uh, you know, if you replace an air conditioner, you can say no, because that's what you're doing anyways. When you do a listing ticket, you're saying, hey, we put all new stuff in. Yep. But if you we were just talking about painting. If you know that there's a roof that's problematic and you're not going to repair it as the investor, and what you do instead is hide, you know, replace some plaster and put some drywall up and, you know, but you knew of leaks, well, that's misleading and mm -hmm. you're going to get caught. Mm -hmm. not, not at the time of closing, but people will come back to you. Well, what about if you, whether you're an investor or you're a homeowner, if you repair something shortly prior to selling your home, you, uh, you know that there's a leak in the roof or a leak in the foundation, you get that repaired. And uh, then 
uh, during say three months later, you sell the property um, and you had no issue, but three weeks post, you know, closing now there is an issue. How, when, how would that be dealt with? Well, when uh, we deal with it, I mean, mm-hmm. you know, I, at risk of sounding a modest, I mean, I probably have like at least a hundred home seller disclosure files going right. on at any time. Uh, we have a lot of activity um, for both sellers and for buyers. But here's the thing, when in doubt, disclose. Mm-hmm. So if you, you should say then on that side, I mean, there's so many different issues. I get calls all the time. Sure, should sure. I disclose this? And I always say, if you are, if you doubt it, it's better mm-hmm. that you just disclose it. Okay? Sure. And, and it might, you know, it might kill your sale, but right now it probably wouldn't. Um, but like with the, the water in the roof, you would write though, I repaired the roof or I repaired mm-hmm. this area of the roof and I have mm-hmm. and I have not had any issues since I've done the repairs. Now, what you've done, you're not warranting. That's the thing. You're not warranting to them that the roof is never going to leak again. What you're doing is you're putting them on notice so that they can then turn around and get a, a you know, a, a home inspector. But actually, it's more than a home inspector. You want a roofing inspector. Mm-hmm. So there are many times uh, where we're able to defeat actions where somebody goes, oh, you know, the roof is leaking or something like that, or the, the foundation's going. And we'll say, well, it says on the disclosure that they had this repair. Oh, yeah, but, you know, that was years ago. Okay, but it puts you on notice yes. to go and double check. That's the difference. That's why, uh, oh, my God, we can make a whole hour, if not two, three hours of seller disclosure issues. But your question is very well taken, and that is you repaired it. You should disclose it. Now, if you're a home investor and you've remodeled the whole house, you can say, I've, re- I've renovated the whole house. We did this to this, this to that. Great. But the minute you covered something up yep. and you've misled by saying, hey, we put um, you know brand new flooring down, but right underneath the flooring is you never took up, I, I don't know how this would happen, but you never took up all the asbestos. Mm-hmm. And then something happens where the asbestos has been just underneath there, not controlled properly somebody gets sick, you're responsible. You hit it. Yep. Great. You remodeled it, but you didn't do it right. Right. That, do you see the difference? We all know right We all know right from wrong. My thing is, if you have to ask, if you're not sure, disclose it. Just disclose right. it. That's a okay. good one. 